I'm going to show you the end game between Levon Aronian and Wang Hao from round seven of the Isle of Man FIDE chess.com grand Swiss tournament. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting us on PayPal or Patreon.com. Right, let's get on with this game. So going into round seven, two players shared the lead. Wang Hao from China and Fabiano Caruana. Caruana faced Grishuk had a fascinating battle that ended in a draw. And Wang Hao had the black pieces against Levon Aronian. Now, something went wrong in the opening uh, for the Chinese player. And he found himself struggling for a draw pretty much from straight out of the opening. And they arrived in a Rook and Pawn end game. We joined the game after 38 moves, with Aronian having this extra Rook's Pawn. He also has his Rook very well placed, supporting the Pawn, whoops, supporting the Pawn across the fifth rank, not exactly there. And it's still active, that's important. Now, if there would, if it were just a single Rook end game, I think this would be, well, almost certain it's a win. With double Rooks, it's more complicated because White doesn't want to get tied to defending this pawn. Then it becomes more difficult to win. But Aronian in this position found a really beautiful idea to make progress. Instead of putting his rook behind the pawn or elsewhere, he played king to f4. And that king is looking to travel through into g7. And then it'll be difficult to defend the kingside pawns. King f6 blocks out the king for the time being. Rook d5. So he's just threatening now to exchange a pair of rooks, and that is a pretty easy win uh, because the pawn would be able to advance again and probably the, the king would be able to travel over to the queen side to support the pawn. Um, and if rook b4 checked, check the king away, then this rook can block. And, well, with two passed pawns, this should be a pretty easy win. So after rook d5, Wang had to play the king over to e6 to prevent rook d6, and then Aronian continued with his original plan of bringing the king into the heart of the king's side. Now, he had to give up a pawn, had to give up that a pawn, to do this but it was definitely worth it and now there's a threat to bring the rook to f6 attacking the f pawn and if the king goes backwards then it should be possible to bring the second rook into the game to hassle the king along the eighth or perhaps seventh rank so therefore rook a6 to prevent White playing the rook over to f6. And Maronian just ducked the challenge for the moment. He's perhaps looking to play rook e5 check, so therefore rook a5. And here is where he made an inaccuracy. At first he thought that actually pawn to f4 was winning. And the point of this is actually to, well, means that, that this pawn can't be taken uh, straight away when, we'll see in a moment, when black gets counterplay. Um, let me just show you a, a couple of potential variations, but we will obviously return and see the rest of the game. But So rook takes rook, and white threatens to check black's king away and then well it'll be possible to bring the king back so therefore rook a6 rook b5 
And Aronian thought this position actually should be a draw with some kind of, you know, intricate defense for black after taking this pawn and black gets counterplay here. But he'd completely overlooked that in fact rook e5 just forces a winning king and pawn endgame. For example, after this. And now king f8. Push the king up the board and this is completely winning. Alternatively, after rook b5, what happens if the rook just protects black along the seventh rank? Well, then we can give this check. The king is pushed away and then king f6. And now it's very easy to bring the rook round to attack the pawn in f7. And rook takes pawn and the rest of the kingside pawns fall. So in fact, f4 would be a winning move here. Instead, Aronian took, I mean, this looks absolutely winning as well, but black has a remarkable defense, as we'll see in a little while. So rook b7 check is threatened. Therefore, rook a7. And the rook comes to b5. So we've seen this before. The rook wants to check here. Rook a2. Ah, this is serious counterplay now. A check. And the pawn on f7 drops. Well, before we plunge in, should, before we look at rook takes f7 as occurred in the game, let's just have a look at f4 and see if this makes a difference. In fact, black has sufficient counterplay in this position. Black's king becomes very active and with this manages to secure the draw. So in that position, f4 wouldn't work. I think that's why it was better to play it earlier. You, you don't lose a tempo, basically. But rook takes f7. The game continuation. I mean, this still looks really dangerous for black, but in fact, black can hold by the skin of his teeth. Rook takes pawn. White pawn up at the moment, and obviously the king is about to come into h6 and h5 to take this pawn, so black needs to keep up the pressure. Rook f3. Rook takes pawn. So we've got a big exchange of pawns uh, and black is on the edge here, but black can hold the game. In fact, in two different ways, the game continuation was OK, but tricky. Um, but perhaps the simplest way of holding the game is actually to wait along the third rank. So Let's just see what potentially could happen. So king h6. So ready to push the pawn, bring the king out of the way. f4, very important move. Now, if the pawns are exchanged, then black's king is too close. It's going to be a draw. So really the only way for white to try to go for a win is to play g4. Now the f-pawn provides sufficient counterplay. Here, the rook can't go behind the pawn. So the rook steps down. And now this is important. Compared to the game, this wouldn't have been possible. So, so this is possible. So king f4 brings the king in. And that prepares to block the f-file so that the pawn can go through and in fact this is just a draw so we go in between we build a bridge and for example takes takes here and there's no checkmate, probably no checkmate. <laughs> Black should draw that one. 
Um, okay, let's go back. So, in fact, rook a3 was possible, just waiting. Instead, Wang Hao, you know, he was consuming a lot of time. But he played in this position f4 actually quite quickly. Now, once again, if pawns are exchanged, then this is actually a pretty simple draw because black's king is too close. So, for example, check. And if king f6, the rook goes behind here. So after f4, really, white's only try is g4. And this is now really tricky. It's still a draw, but the only by a thread. So let's see. Remember, they've been the players have been playing something like, well, at this stage, five and a half hours, maybe, maybe a little longer actually. And that is absolutely exhausting. F3. So this pawn gives counterplay. So F2 is the threat. So therefore king g5 now that in that other variation that actually wasn't possible and this makes the difference actually and here wang hao made the final fatal blunder he could still have drawn now i'm going to show you that the end how he could draw because it's really miraculous first of all let's see the game continuation so rook a3 blunder The rook goes behind the pawn, and you can see the difference between the last variation. Black's king is simply unable to help that pawn, or, or come in behind white's pawns, rather. So rook a8. Now, this is very tricky, because if rook takes pawn, then in fact rook g8 draws the game. The king is very unfortunately placed in front of those pawns. If king h6, then rook takes should be a draw. So for example, like this. And well, the king basically doesn't doesn't get away from the, the, the rook's file. So what should white play here? Well, Aronian played a winning move and it's pretty simple. He played rook f5 check. And this makes a huge difference. So if, for example, the king steps backwards, now you can take that pawn. And the difference is that after the check, the king simply, simply steps backwards and, well, for example, check here. The king is safe and then it's a very simple matter to just step forward slowly with those pawns and black is completely lost. So after rook f5 check, Wang Hao played king e4. And this is also very different. h5. This pawn is just too slow if the king you know, shuffles down the board. It really doesn't make any difference at all. You know, white is just going to push on, uh, and black is utterly lost in that position. Um, white can always give up the the rook for the pawn, and and white's pawns march through. So well, Levon was relieved to have won but he knew actually this position was drawn um i mean he realized back here that rook a3 was probably the simplest draw but coming back to this position now there is a study like way to draw instead of rook a3 as played in the game and losing rook d3 is the draw. Now let's try to understand the difference. This is the only move to draw in the position. White plays rook f6, as we've seen. Need to come behind that pawn. 
So Rook D8, exactly the same as the game continuation. And once again, if Rook takes F3, then this is a draw. Let's just see a few more moves, for example, here. And you can try and step away and advance this pawn, but it really doesn't matter. The king comes back and, well, it's, it's a theoretical draw. Right, so what exactly is the problem? Um, yeah, so rook d8. Now, what about the game continuation? Rook f5 check. And now we see the difference. So once again, king e6 would lose because of rook takes pawn and then white's king can actually step back and out of the checks. But king e4 in this case is a draw. Why is it a draw? Well, because after h5, black has rook d5. This is the difference that black can exchange rooks here. Remember, the rook in the other variation was on the a-file, so this pin was simply wasn't possible. And after the exchange, both sides queen. But because black checks first, well, this is this is a draw, basically. So what else we got? Uh, rook f4 check doesn't work. The rook comes here and we start checking. And that is once again a draw, rook g8 check. And the king simply doesn't escape. So a remarkable move, rook d3, only move to draw, would have saved Wang Hao. I feel very sorry for him. You know, he conducted an excellent defense. Although, you know, Levon was in control for, well, really the entire game, actually. So that victory means that Levon Aronian bounces into first place along with Fabiano Caruana. So they will play each other in round eight of the tournament. Thanks for watching.